Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I want to talk to you about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. It's called Dada Patrol. And it opens where we see that K, the child personality in Jane's body, wants to take control to go buy some shoes, which is weird, but the psychiatrist persona inside, you know, Jane slash K uh, does not approve of this. Cliff realizes that his Parkinson's medication is going to take a couple of months to become effective. He ordered it during the last episode. If he takes the regular dose and he decides to take way more than he's supposed to. <laughs> and it was interesting to see him take the pills too, because I guess he pours stuff that he wants to absorb into a funnel that connects to something that goes right into his brain, because that's the only organic tissue he has. So it was kind of cool. Cyborg's uplink comes back on spontaneously when his father realizes that he needs, you know, his son to be able to defend himself. And he really couldn't without the uplink. So he let him have it back. Larry, meanwhile, seems to have something moving around in his head, which is very disturbing. The team ends up having a team meeting called by Lady Rouge, which is weird because she's not on the team. But anyway, at the meeting, Jane calls her Doctor Who, uh, which was very funny for a couple of reasons, because it would be funny by itself. But of course, Michelle Gomez played the master on Doctor Who and was excellent at it, by the way. She was the best master they've had since the reboot in 2009. But it, it would have been funny on its own, of course, just to bring Doctor Who, you know, into it, especially because the character's a time traveler and, and you know, it's, it's one sci-fi show referencing another. So it would have been funny on its own, but the fact that the actress was in Doctor Who <laughs> makes it, so much funnier. Anyway, Lady Rouge tells the team that the Dadas are a menace and she asked them to kill the sisterhood of the Dada, which they vigorously declined to do at first, but I guess upon realizing that, okay, yeah, they are kind of a menace to the world and that they're planning something called the Great Flatulation, they agree to at least go and try to infiltrate the, the Dadas to infiltrate the group. So that's what they set off to do. Before this happens, Rita and Rouge have a conversation and Rouge shows her the film and that she's in it. And it confirms for Rita that she is a time traveler. Cliff, meanwhile, is tripping on his overdose of Parkinson's meds. And he tries to squish Larry's neck zit, quote unquote, while Larry's driving the bus. But Larry, of course, resists this and he, you know, goes a little jerky and ends up crashing the bus. Well, not really crashing it. It goes off the road into a creepy forest. And the team gets off the bus and goes in different directions. Cliff, of course, continues to trip. And he seems to discover some weird entities in the woods. And he's, he's seeing things, including a Japanese woman in a glass box. And in trying to speak with her, he realizes that he can speak Japanese all of a sudden and they have a conversation about death and about how the woman feels she will one day be useless when every thought is thought and every painting is painted which i didn't really understand but that's what she says jane meets a weird woman in the woods in a bar I'm not sure what there's to do a bar in the in these woods which by the way are very foggy and the woman is going by Shelley Byron, which of course is hilarious. And she asks the woman if she can join the Dadas right before Kay shows up, you know, in the bar, which again is weird. How can Kay be there in her child form? It doesn't make any sense. Cyborg is walking around in the woods as well. He ends up meeting a weird sculptor. Larry, who stayed behind with the bus, is kind of working on it because I guess somehow it got damaged when they didn't crash into anything. I don't know. But he ends up seeing some weird stuff, including his own elderly son, Paul, who tries to shoot him, but the gun wasn't loaded. And at first I thought this was a hallucination, but it turns out that it wasn't. The kid's really there, or the guy is really there. It's not a kid, but you know what I mean. Back at the mansion, Rita, who didn't go with the team, is dancing with Rouge to some 40s music. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Back to the woods and the bar where Jane is, Hammerhead shows up, and I guess she wants to get in the bar because she thinks Jane's in danger or Kay's in danger, I don't know. Back over to Cyborg, the sculptor tells him that he doesn't really know himself. And as he's telling him this, Copa Gabbana is playing Barry Manilow's song, I don't know why. Back to the bar in the woods, 
Hammerhead breaks in and grabs Kay, but Kay doesn't want to go with her as the lady gives Jane a message for Laura DeMille, who of course is Lady Rouge, and seems to zap the whole team back to the bus at the same time. So they just show up back on the bus. Back at home, Victor finds a ceramic mask that seemingly says approximate man inside of it, which he smashes. I don't know who approximate man is. Cliff takes yet more pills. Larry tends to his son, whom I guess was injured or whatever, whom he took home from the woods, as the thing in the back of his neck now, it was in his head, now it's in the back of his neck, and it starts to glow. The episode ends with Rita getting into the time machine and trying to operate it so that she can travel in time, which is interesting because, you know, she has believed now for a couple of episodes that she's a time traveler. It seems that that got confirmed when she shows up in the old film that Lady Rouge shows her. And because of this, she actually goes and tries to become a time traveler, which if she succeeds, would make it a self-fulfilling prophecy in like a closed loop. She thinks she's a time traveler when she hasn't actually time traveled yet, but then she time travels. <laughs> so, it, 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 you know, it's cyclical, it's very cool. And in fact, it looks like she does succeed because the preview for next week seems to show the team, or at least her anyway, back in time. <laughs> so it should be very interesting. But that's the episode. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, very strange, but it did seem to move the ball forward, which is always good. A lot of shows have episodes where they don't move the ball forward and it's like, why is this episode here? So I always like episodes that move the ball forward better than episodes of shows that don't. I will be back, of course, with review of the next episode. Until then, my friends, I wish you all peace and long life.